Hey, welcome back to my channel. It's Christina at Homeschool and Grace. And today is another weekly update for weeks three and four. And I'm really excited to share with you what we have been learning. I also wanted to share with you and say thank you so much for all your prayers and well wishes with um, my video a little bit ago of uh, my health update and just sharing about our second miscarriage and I wanted to let you know that after that video, um, I filmed that back in September. So now I always have the updated date here. If you're ever like, when did she make that video? I try to always update my calendar so you know. So this is October 22nd. Um, so I have gone since gone to the doctor and got my test results back. And she, we've been working together for a game plan to get me uh, better. So she did put me on a low dose uh, thyroid medication that I've been taking. And she also gave me some other um, supplements to help with my um, anxiety and stress, which is kind of hard to work through stress. That's kind of something I've got to just do personally, but uh, just some different supplements to help with that. And then just personally trying to alleviate stress. I also cut out gluten. And she wants me to cut out caffeine. I've mostly cut out caffeine. It is really hard for me to give up my first cup of coffee in the morning. I just have one cup, but I so enjoy it. <laughs> so, so I'm still drinking my coffee. I'm being a little stubborn about it, but I am feeling drastically better. It's been a blessing. I don't have, um, I still, my heart will flutter at times, but it's not as intense as it was. The shortness of breath has really calmed down. Just an overall, uh, I just am feeling healthier. Uh, one little hiccup that we've had recently is that my hip is continuing to go out. Um, so my hips or my pelvis, I don't know, one of them gets locked forward. And so I have one leg then shorter than the other. And so I had to go to the chiropractor to get it put back in place. And I had this happen I was having it happen pretty regularly a while ago before the miscarriage, well, both miscarriages. And so, but then it had stopped. Well, they've started up again. So I had to go actually twice to the chiropractor in just the last week to get it fixed. And he was saying that it was most likely due to my um, ligaments are all loose from the miscarriage or miscarriages. And so it's causing my hip to be able to uh, get locked or get stuck in that position because the ligament's not holding it in place like it's supposed to. So that's kind of a bummer, <laughs> but, but we're working through that now. And, um, it's kind of like two steps forward, a step back and we're just kind of going in the right direction, but just still kind of dealing with health stuff, but it's getting much better and just slowly, you know, making changes to make sure that I'm doing the best to get my body where, you know, strong again and just uh healthy to take care of all these little ones so so that's where i'm at um i just wanted to share that to begin with and so let's see here i've got all this curriculum behind me i'm trying to decide how i want to start i also wanted to share uh i just finished a really great book called faithfully different by natasha crane i think as a parent it's a really great book to help you know what's happening in the culture and how we can look at it with a biblical perspective. And so I highly recommend that book to parents out there, or even if you're not a parent and you're just like, I don't understand what's going on. Uh, I just think it's a really great book and just really helps you understand why things are happening or how people are reacting to things. You're like, oh, that makes sense now. So <laughs> I really enjoyed it. Okay, curriculum. We're gonna start out with my three oldest, 1850 to modern times with my father's world. Oh, and one more thing. I hope that you've enjoyed some of these videos I've been coming out with um, that have been sponsored by my father's world. It's been fun being able to work with them and give them some content that's gonna help them, um, you know, answer questions that they get from their, uh, on their website. That's the purpose of these videos. If you've seen, there's been two, a long version and a short version of how to use your teacher's manual. If you're new to homeschooling and you don't know how to use this teacher's manual, I talk about it in two separate videos. And so make sure you check that out. I'll have another video coming out that's also sponsored by them on a different subject. And then one more that's like the shorter version of that same subject. So 
the those are the next two that will be coming out and i think that might be it for a while but just so give you a heads up they're kind of fun it's a different idea for me i'm used to being very fluid in my videos so it's kind of like staying focused <laughs> i'm not always the best at but I've, it's been fun to do okay so let's start out like i always do i start at the top and work my way down okay so for bible we were reading through then sings my soul the song was stand up stand up for jesus and we found a neat version of that it was like a school almost i think but i'll link it below it was a really great version for that hymn we enjoyed that we've also been reading through a young person's guide to knowing god i am loving this devotional it is excellent so they go through the apostles creed and so they take different parts of it and then kind of she focuses in on like i believe in god the father so it focuses in on god the father almighty and then it focuses in on jesus and then the holy ghost and so we're going through that and it is an excellent devotional i think even for adults like it's great to go through with kids and adults alike i i almost cry every single time like the stories are so um it just really helps to solidify what you read in the scripture. So we read from the Bible, the selected text, and we talk about it. And then we go and read through a young person's guide. So it's been, it's excellent. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Can't recommend it enough. Like, <laughs> I'm so glad that my father's world put it in. So just wanted to put that out there. Okay. Um... So our memory verse, now this isn't this week's, but um, I started, I copy it onto just printer paper on like a Google Doc, and then I make lines so that they can copy it. That's how we've been doing that. I also started, let's see, what was the verse? I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you, John 13, 15. And then the other one was, this is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers. So I've started like just really clapping to the syllables to it or making a beat. Like I have set you an example. And then we've been, I have a, I should have taken a picture of it, but I didn't. It's hopscotch, but it's a rug hopscotch. And so we've been using that to help memorize, uh, well, not only our Bible verses, but also our, um, states <laughs> and so they have to throw the rock and they have to get so far in either the bible verse or in their states and then if they can go further you know they get bonus points or whatever and then um if they can't then the next person gets to try and go even further than them so it's been a fun way to memorize by using the rug i really like the rug i'll try and link one if i can find one um because when the rains are coming you know we're up in the pacific northwest and it's sunny again today, but it was supposed to be rainy all day. But we are looking for the rainy season and being stuck inside, having something to keep them moving. I always try and have something like that, like a hopscotch rug, a, you know, one of those tunnels they can go through. We've got a bunch of gymnastics equipment that, that, that we will pull out in the rainy season. I've got trampoline, little trampolines we'll pull out. Anything to keep them <laughs> moving. And, uh, you know, rain boots to go splash in muddy puddles, like little Peppa Pigs. <laughs> like we do that. Okay, so I didn't finish up Bible. Let's go back here. Okay, we also read Trial and Triumph on David Livingston and Hudson Taylor. And I think I didn't bring that book up, so, but we did read through that one. Um, and then there's some nice sections on prayer. So it's like praying for specific things and people. Um, you know, we prayed for the president, we prayed for the legislative branch, um, and then the judicial branch, and then we prayed for protection against, uh, enemies, and so we did that. So that was really great. Um, okay, so that's how we've been doing Bible, we're memorizing. I haven't been testing the memory verse, I probably should. I haven't added that back in yet, but we have been doing... You know, like I said, memorizing it, 
of doing the copy work for it, the handwriting, and we haven't done, we'll do the dictation by, you know, memory, and then actually we have not done dictation of it, I take it back, and we have not done the test. Okay, on to spelling. Okay, so my second grader was not ready for spelling. She has been kind of a later to read, and so we're just really working on still learning to read. And so I actually gave this to my fourth grader, which I know it's super easy for her. But last year, she hated writing. <laughs> she hated it. And so this year, a switch has flipped and she is willing to write things. I mean, last year it was pulling teeth just to write a little bit. So I am so grateful. And I even told her last night, I am so happy that you are writing for me now and willing to write and do copy work. And so I pulled this back out and we're working through this. I realized we, I had tried the spelling power with her before and she would really get anxious when she couldn't see the words ahead of time. Where this, she gets the words and we can read through them and talk about them and find the differences. And so I've decided once she finishes this, next year we'll do spelling power again. And I'll just give her the words ahead of time, which I know is not the spelling power way. But I have to modify it for everyone's sanity. So we'll just do it that way. So she'll get the words ahead of time so she can look at them and feel confident in them. And then I'll test her on them and we'll go that way. So that's how we're going to use it. And this is what she's using. My oldest is not using any spelling right now. It's just, we're kind of working with her as words come up that she needs help. We do that. On to English. This is going to be long. So buckle up. Okay. <laughs> long video. Okay. So language lessons for today. This is for my second grader and my fourth grader. Um, we are loving language lessons for today. It's, you know, in years past, I haven't always focused on like doing the copy work when it says or do the writing assignments. And I wish I had more. I think it would have been helpful. So this year, I've been much more diligent about it with my kids. And um, they're doing really great. And so we're just going to keep going that way with both of them. So that's where they are working on this. Okay, my fourth grader. Now, I had said in my last video I was going to skip using this with her, but she has just so, shown so much uh, maturity and uh, ability to do this. So I pulled it out and I'm like, okay, we're going to start working on this. So we were a little bit behind on like what the schedule says, but I'm totally fine with that. So she has started working through this and she's doing really great and we're just taking it slow. And I'm just sitting with her and we just, you know, I, I help her as needed, but she's doing a really great job with that. I really thought that that wouldn't, that book wouldn't happen, but it has. I'm really grateful. Okay. For my seventh grader, eighth grader, whatever grade she is, <laughs> we're homeschoolers. Um, she is doing basics for communicating effectively. Now I will say I have followed along on the Facebook page for my Father's World, 1850 and Modern Times, and a lot of people are struggling with this book. I don't, I, I will say we've had our moments of struggle where there was confusion, but I'm actually, she's actually liking it pretty well. I mean, I sit right by her and if, you know, we just kind of work through the things together. If she's unsure, we talk about it, we go back and reference. And uh, so we're doing that. And it's been really helpful for her, I think, that I sit right by her and I correct right away if I see an error, where in the past I would let it sit and then she would forget the concept. And so then the learning wasn't happening that needed to happen, where this I can course correct right, right away and we can get back on the right page. And so that's how we've been doing it together. I keep asking her, are you hating this book or anything like that? She's like, no, I don't. I don't mind. She's like, I actually feel like I'm learning quite a bit from it. So, and I feel like I'm actually learning quite a bit. We talked about, they talked about independent, independent clauses. And I will be honest, I could not remember what that was. And I was like, Oh, Oh, that makes sense. The way they explained it. I, I understood it much better than I ever have. I feel like, so it can be tedious. If you're willing to sit with your student, I think it's a great book. If you're expecting independent work from it, Maybe some kids out there do great with it with independent, but I really feel like it needs that one-on-one -on -one time. And I just look at it as like, this is an opportunity that I get to sit with her because I, we don't always get to do that since she's getting older. Okay. So that is 
uh, English. She also is reading, this is through her co-op. She's reading the Scarlet Pimpernel. Um, she's almost done with this. So she has to write questions from each chapter, comprehensive questions. She answers and then she writes, she has written an essay on it and she'll be writing, I think, another one. And her teacher's teaching her how to do outlines with it. So it's a really great um, co-op program that she's able to be a part of. So she's really been enjoying this book. I can't remember the next book after this that she'll be reading, um, but I'll share. I think it might be Screw Tape Letters by C.S. Lewis. I think that'll be next, but this is, she's, she struggled at first, but she has enjoyed it. I think I'm gonna read it next because it's a compelling story. Let's see here. That was English. Okay, history. Okay, so these last couple weeks have been super fun. I think it was both weeks. Let me double check. Yes. Okay, so we started on Story of the World. We're really enjoying this. Um, we learned about Victoria's England, the Sepoy Mutiny, Crimean War, uh, wandering through Africa, Italy's resurrection, you know, resurrection, and the Taiping Rebellion. So we are really liking this. Now it's recommended not for my second grader, but, um, and it, that is from Story of the World and also My Father's World. I will say all my kids sit in and listen. There hasn't been content that's been a, too much for them. So we just have been doing it all together. They like doing the coloring pages from the activity book and they answer the questions together. Now I will say if, I feel like the questions can sometimes be like, I don't even remember, I don't remember reading that. Like sometimes it's very obscure little tidbits that you have to listen. Not the whole, all the questions, but just some of them. So uh, I will just say, okay, I don't think any of us know this. I'll ask if no one knows, then I just give the answer. I'm not like demanding that we find the answer. I just give them the answer from the book. Sometimes we'll just go through the questions and I'll say, okay, we're gonna go through these questions and I'm gonna give you the answers. <laughs> just do it that way. Now, another part was to do an outline with this from each chapter. We have not been doing the outline. I may start including it for my oldest because I think she can definitely do it. But because I feel like my fourth grader is doing a lot more writing already this year than she has in the past, I, I don't think I'm going to expect that from her or my, my second grader, definitely not. So that's where we're at. We have been doing, sorry, I should look this way. We have been doing the map work. I will say the maps are, uh, this year are more advanced than they have been for the other story of the worlds. Uh, it's a lot more labeling the whole places instead of like just circling or coloring in a country. And so I try and modify it for my littler ones as they sit in. So instead of like having them write the whole country, I'll be like, just make a, you know, the first initial and then color it in or um, something like, like that, or make the line to the other country that they would go to or something like that. So we've been kind of modifying it. And then my oldest, she does have to write in all the countries and everything. So that's how we're doing that. What was fun for the Crimean War is my daughter, my oldest had taken a class called the Battles That Changed History at her co-op last year. So she has this big old book. So we actually found the Crimean War and I think another one, uh, maybe that was it. Oh, I think the Sepoy Mutiny we read too. So we were able to find it in here. So that made it kind of fun. And this is a really neat book that it shows all these battles and uh, stuff like this, <laughs> pictures and art and more description. And it goes through a lot of them. So, uh, Anyway, that's been fun to pull out. For the presidents, we've been working through their little president cards and everything. So that's been fun for them. Oh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say necessarily fun, but they're doing it. Uh, I have them just copy from the card. We read through the card on the back together and then they have to copy uh, so many facts from the cards and glue it on. And then we always read from this thing. This is a Spandex presidents that I have. And so we'll read the information about the presidents from this. And then this is a really fun book. Don't know much about the presidents, but it goes through each, each president and gives some fun facts about them. And then it sometimes has questions. 
so that you can, uh, they can answer. So it makes it really interactive. We really like this book and I'll make sure I link both of these. If you're ever interested, you definitely don't need them, but just throwing it out there that this is what we've been using. Okay. And I think it just makes it a little more fun than just having to do the, the president paper. It kind of gives some more info and just, uh, brings to life those presidents a bit more. So every Friday, they're supposed to continue to work on learning their states, uh, the states, like play the game. And we haven't necessarily done that. We just, like I said, we were doing that hopscotch thing. Um, and then we'll, I'll have them line up the states and they have to put them in order. That's about all we've been doing for that. So for my second uh, grader supplement, she's been using U.S. Facts and Fun. She is loving this book. It's been a great it is a great supplement. So this is from Evan Moore and it's just, you know, they just did really well. I felt like adding this in as a supplement, like it is so perfect for this age and it, she just is having a lot of fun. So I'm really grateful they added this in because a lot of the info this year is a bit over her head. And so this has been fun to sit with her and work on. Um, it kind of fills that little bucket of her own history time if she gets a little fatigued listening to the story of the world the whole time. So we really are enjoying this one. She's also supposed to be working See the USA. This one is a little bit more advanced. I, I might actually give this to my th fourth grader to work through, honestly, because I think it's just a little bit too much for my second grader. But I don't know. Maybe I'll give it a chance again. But I felt like it was a little bit more over her head. Um, I didn't show, we've also been working through our timeline. So this year, it's really a cool timeline book. If you don't have it, it's got all the stuff that we've learned already. Okay. So these are all the cutouts, the timeline cutouts from story of the world we've been adding in. And it goes on to this side. So we've been adding those in. I don't know if we got them perfectly on the right date, but we gave it, we gave it a try. Um, so that's been fun to do. They take turns who gets to glue in the next timeline piece. So that's been fun for them. Okay. On to science. Okay. My second and fourth grader have been working through exploring creation, ex chemistry and physics. They really enjoy this book. I will say though, I am struggling to get it in as often as it's scheduled. It's scheduled three days a week. We're getting it done about once a week. Um, <laughs> And so I'm struggling if I just go slowly through it and we just stay kind of behind on it. Or if I just, you know, we just do it once a week and we skip the lesson. And that's where I'm trying to figure out what we do um, because we're just kind of struggling to keep up. But they are really enjoying it. I got to see. Yeah, it's scheduled all year. So we might just be skipping lessons. I thought about, um, you know, having when we have our weeks that are slower catching up on the ones that we miss. We might do that. I don't know. I'm not sure. So, but they are really liking it. The, the experiments are fun and simple and even my littles are joining in, um, as we do it. So that's been fun for them to watch what big sisters do. They're all reading various books. Um, we've also subscribed recently to reading eggs, which has been fun for them. And it's given like something for my other kids to do when I'm working maybe one-on-one -on -one with someone else, I can be like, oh, go do reading eggs. And at least I feel like they're still getting that uh, learning time in, but it's not, it, it just gives them that time to be on a screen. They feel like they're going to be on a screen, but they're actually learning. So. Okay. We've used, uh, we haven't got to hit God in the history of art this year. Okay. So music, we started learning about Foster. I will be honest. We have not opened this yet to listen to him to listen to the music or the story, but I, I have gotten this last year on Amazon. It's called Stories of the Great Composers. It's short less sessions on the lives and music of the great composers. And so there was a foster unit. So it gives a, a little history about him. And then it also gives some questions about him. So we would, you know, if would ask like, where was he born? And it gives a, you know, A or B, you know, wherever he was born and like a picture to color. We didn't do that. But 
he wrote Oh Susanna, so we looked up that song and listened to it. So that's what we did for our foster study. Um, Sue said that was not in here, so... But I think they have more of these, so I might see about if there's one with Sousa. Oh, no, he is in here. He is in here. So we'll maybe use this again. So anyway, this is what we use because I feel like that's about, I do better reading. We've, we've tried to listen along and we get, a, we just, it just doesn't happen. <laughs> it doesn't happen. Um, so that's where we're at. Okay, let's see here. I also have another book on the musical people. I don't know where I put it. Okay, read alouds. We're getting to the end, I promise. Well, at least with these two, <laughs> with these ones. Okay, uh, my we're reading Courage to Run. My girls are loving this book. Every time I read it, they're like, one more chapter, one more chapter. So we are gonna, like, we're cruising through it. They are loving it. This is a story on Harriet Tubman. It is so good, so good. We're also reading Farmer Boy. And this is always delightful and, um, we are oh, a little over halfway through. So these have been our read alouds. It's been really fun. Um, I've been finding more and more in the mornings. We just sit for a while and just read. Kind of like that morning basket idea that I've never been really great at. But uh, that has, what, has been what we've been doing. And they're just, uh, they'll just play. And it's been a really sweet time. Okay. Whew. That was 1850 to modern times. That was a lot. So there you go. Okay, God's Creation from A to Z, the kindergarten. So we learned about the sun and the moon. Okay, so I'm going to start again just up at the beginning, at the top, and work my way down and share with you what we have been doing. Of course, all my papers are going to be on the wrong side. Okay, we started her calendar, and as you can see here, that was her birthday. She's an October birthday. So this has been fun to work through. We say the days of the week and then we go through and say Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday and figure out which day and what was yesterday and tomorrow. She's also working on her hundred chart. So we're supposed to be doing a bean cup or a coin cup with that. I've done that so many times and I didn't want to do it again. So I decided to use the old abacus because it goes to a hundred. We count to 100, so she just counts out the number of beads that we are to that day. And I think it's a good visual for even like, you know, once we get to 10, then we go to the next line. And so she's learning that way. And that's how I've been doing it. Um, we read the poem, My Shadow. Uh, I think it's by Robert, yeah, Lewis Stevenson. That's a sweet little poem. Okay, so on to her reading. We did lots of student sheets and they're in no particular order. So she learned her M's and her S's and did all these things. And then she did her little pictures. And there's her, her daddy, Steven. So she put him on there. And I think she made me. I think that's supposed to, and maybe this is supposed to be me. I'm not sure. Her mommy is cute. She did this and this, made her son. I will say I invested this year in new um, jumbo crayons for my preschooler and my kindergartner. They just use both use this and this has been like the best investment, uh, for them for coloring much better than the little crayons that break easily. So this has been super de duper. This is honestly the only school supply I bought this year because we have, we have so much. I didn't need to buy anything else. I may have bought some tape. I think that was the one other thing I bought, but I didn't have to buy glue. I didn't have to buy anything. We've just had so much, so that's all I bought. Okay, let's see. That's all the student sheets. I have been hanging up these. Um, these were given to me. I'm not sure where they're from, but I hang these up so they're nice for seeing how she's to trace them on her lines because it gives the lines and the placement. You know, we say they say upstairs was it basement and downstairs and we typically say hat line belt line and shoe line so that's how we've been using it i've also for a tactile she uses this i found this at a goodwill or salvation army or something but it, it's very you can feel it and then i use a little d wooden dowel that she can trace them or she can just use her fingers 
to tray some, so that's been a fun thing. Oh, the salt tray. I've got a little salt tray that we always use. I'm not going to grab it right now, but um, she uses that as well. And the salt is always a big hit, but is needs much supervision. Okay, so she also made her son, and she wanted to make a rainbow, so that was her son. And then for... She was supposed to make a spaceship, and I uh, didn't want to do that. So, so I found an Art for Kids Hub uh, video. I will link their YouTube channel below, but they have a ton of art little YouTube videos all on, like, everything. So they had one on a rocket ship that you cut out, and then you made a little crescent moon. So she did that, and that was perfect. <laughs> So I recommend if you're ever like, I'm not sure what to do, let's do an art project. You can look one of their videos up and they pretty much have one for everything. I mean, I just saw recently they came out with a quail one, which I'm like, perfect. We're going to learn about quails eventually. We learned about the phases of the moon. I forgot to grab that. Let me grab those. Um, so we made our little moon cards. I've seen people use like Oreo cookies to make the phases of the moon, which I think is such a cute idea. I just never remembered to buy Oreos in time. So you, we played a little matching game with these. So that was fun. Oh, I forgot to show these. So this is her little cards. What are they called? The letter sound cards or sound discrimination cards, maybe. Picture box activity. I don't know. Whatever. So you're supposed to put them in envelopes this year. I'm just putting them in the box. And I have them just in order, you know, with their letters at the front so it won't be that hard I think to find the one we're looking for so that's how we're using that this year. We read Moon Bear Shadow and she made a little moon bear and a puddle. It's cute so that's what we did with that. We read this is from My Father's World um, but we read about the moon, Let's see the moon phases and then we read about the sun and I just love the artwork in here it's just gorgeous. It's illustrated by Christy Davis. Okay, for numbers, when we learn about the numbers, I've been using these nature activity cards. I've shared these with my preschool in the past. We have the alphabet ones too, but we've been using these. So we did one squirrel and two jackdaws. I think that's all she learned so far. We also read Little Bear, and there's a story about a spaceship, so that was fun to read. This is, this is a great classic. We read that. And then we read, or we didn't read. I decided to pull these out to give it a try when we do the number activities so she can add them together. So it's the two piece counting learning puzzles. So we're going to use those. We didn't do many of the, like, we didn't make a creation mobile. I found she really just likes to color. If she can color, she's pretty content. So we haven't done a lot and forms of other things. Um, for Bible, we did all the Bible stuff and talked about how the moon reflects the sun. And then we talked about the sun and corresponding to the Bible. So that is everything for God's creation from A to Z. I apologize, I'm speeding up, but my I am almost out of memory. I gotta go, quick. Okay, my last one, my preschooler, all aboard the animal train. So we finished up our unit on squirrels. So she made her little, you know, we finished up this little guy. We read the little squirrel, did all the poems with that. We played a little game where she had acorns and she had to match them to the squirrels and colored those. We read the squirrels book, squirrels. This is from Scholastic, Time to Discover Readers. I'll try and link it below if you're interested, but it's a really quick, short little book on squirrels. I can always appreciate little books like this for preschoolers that are super simple. We also read Earl the Squirrel, which is a classic. I think it's by Freeman, um, who wrote Corduroy. And it's a really great book and sweet little story. So I highly recommend it. Okay, for Bible, we read about thankfulness. And we read about the 10 lepers in here. Now, this is a book I always like to add in when I can. This is the Bible Time Nursery Rhyme book. This was mine when I was a little kid. And I just love it. I love it. So we read 10 Sick Men. We read that story. And it's always like in nursery rhyme form. So it's a really great book. We also sang songs. 
um, the wheels on the bus. Did the wheels on the bus. <laughs> I've got this old classroom song bank from Lakeshore. This was given to me, but I'll show. It has all these really cool cards for when you're singing the songs. And so then it has the songs on the back for, you know, the teacher. Uh, but I, there's a wheels on the bus one we used. So we did wheels on the bus. Um, and she had a lot of fun with that song. Okay, let's see. What else? She did her greeting card. We did not make the cinnamon squirrel ornament this time. And we made brown water. Let me grab that. I don't know if it turned out that brown. It almost just looks black, but, but it was fun to make for her. So I shared this before, but again, we played. Um, so when you do the surprise time, the last option is number five, and you're typically supposed to change it out each um, unit. And so for that, we changed it to this one, which was the sneaky, snacky squirrel. And they had a lot of fun playing this. All my girls would play it with her typically, but it's got a little squirrel. And then you got this. And you put the little acorns as you collect them in here. It's a lot like Hi-Ho Chariot. So as a parent, I really dislike these kind of games where like, you know, you lose, you can, you have the potential of rolling or spinning to lose all of your acorns and starting over. It makes me go bonkers. I, can't, I don't like that, but the girls like it. So we play it. Um, so there you go. That is what we did for surprise time. So that is all we did for the last two weeks, weeks three and four. Anyway, I hope this was helpful for you and your homeschooling. Remember, not every homeschool is alike. So don't look at mine and think you have to do everything I do. You make your school work for you and all your work books work for you. This is what we do at our home. And I hope that this video was a blessing to you. If you like this video, here are some others to go and check out. And I hope to see you at the next video. All right, thanks. Bye-bye.